Hey Sunrise, it's Andrew here with your small group questions for this week as we dive into Genesis chapter 10. So first question, why is Genesis 10 here? What are we learning in this text about God? What are we seeing God do from this text that it was important to be in scripture? We'll unpack some of it on Sunday morning, but really as you read the text, looking backwards into what came before in the Noah story and God's blessing, uh, and then even looking forward into the rest of the scriptures. What does Genesis chapter 10 teach us? So as you think about this, looking at a few of the different things, even the groupings of the numbers, the four words, the people, their clans, their languages, their places, what does that teach us? What do we hear in those words? What does it begin to think of forward into the New Testament, how God works? Or even the groupings. In the end, we have three brothers who from these three brothers produce 70 nations is the use of God's counting. Again, this isn't a complete list of everyone, but there's a specific reason why these are chosen to get us to 70. Why 70? Some of you may know, we'll unpack it again in the service, but thinking through scripture, how does scripture use that number and its importance to us? And then from this, we begin to think about nations. Ultimately, that's the heart of what chapter 10 puts us into. It's this heart that we have one God. So no matter who reads this text right here at the beginning, Genesis chapter 10 reminds us of this truth, that we have one God. God is not a local deity. Yahweh is not specific to Israel, but he is the creator of all. And from these three brothers, we see all of the nations come. And so as we unpack that, what's the significance of that? A, for how we live out our lives every day. How does that affect how we see missions? And how does that ultimately lead to us growing in the faith locally in the church? So why don't you spend some time in these? Again, it's not a lot. Uh, we'll maybe a slightly shorter message than usual, but I also want us to take the opportunity this week to spend time in prayer for the nations. Spend time in prayer for what God is doing with our missionaries around the world. So hope you'll really dive into this text a little bit, come prepared to hear it, and then set up again chapter 11. That'd be the last question. Why does chapter 10 come before chapter 11? Not just a sequential issue, but the content. Why does the content of 10 come before the content of 11? Hope you'll unpack some of this stuff, and then I will see you on Sunday, and I hope you guys will be a part of our small groups throughout the week, unpacking these truths even more.